For the longest time I've wanted to make a really beautiful and futuristic city. Maybe this is from an alternate timeline where we just really got it right. You know, these cities are massively in tune with nature. And if a city is promoting connection with nature and beauty, then, you know, hopefully that would reflect on people living there. Some of the most awe-inspiring structures ever built by humans have involved geometry that we find reoccurring in nature. The pyramids, for instance, were based on geometry from the earth, but my favourite is the Sistine Chapel, and there's many more examples that follow the golden ratio. The golden ratio is found right throughout nature, from pine cones and sunflowers to the length of your finger from the second knuckle to the tip. They all represent the same ratio, which is about 1.61, or the golden ratio. Now, I am not going to be building exactly to that ratio, but what I want to try and do is make the city beautiful, but also functional. You know, pedestrian only areas, roads are to a minimum. We've got lots of green spaces and walkable areas that are always different from each other. It really just promotes people to get out and be healthy. So buckle up guys, this series is gonna be one wild ride. So what if that ratio was applied to cities? What if the entire layout of the city was built based on that to keep it as in tune with nature as possible? What if that ratio literally is beauty in an equation? What is beauty? Do I even really know what I'm doing here? <laughs> Not really. I guess I'm just going to create the city that I see in my dreams, my ultimate city. Everywhere's close enough to be able to walk, there's character, you want to go outside, most of your life will be based around going and meeting people within the city, and it gives me the opportunity to build some crazy cool stuff. You've already seen a small glimpse of some of the public transport, I've got some wicked things planned for the future. I've got to say, I am pumped for the series. I haven't been this excited to build a city in City Skylines for a long time. And I'm absolutely blessed to be able to take you guys along on the journey. So anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's get building. I haven't really done too much in terms of detailing the map and you'll see why as the episode progresses. But in terms of starting our city, there were really only two options. One was to bring the roads in underground, which is probably more likely. But I think I decided to go with these above ground roads just to make it a little bit more relatable to the average city skylines player. Because you're going to see that this city is going to look like nothing you've probably ever seen before in the game. Once we get into the city, the roads are going to be very minimal. It's going to be 90% pedestrian. So I'm going to run a basic one way around here that the highway is going to flow into. I'm also going to do some pretty crafty things in terms of hiding this intersection in a bit. The city is going to be really, really complex. So rather than beating my head against the wall and trying to envision the entire city as a whole, I've sort of got to break it down into sections. And this first section here, I've been sketching for a few weeks now. And that sketch is basically just like an artificial lake with a couple of cool looking domes on one side of it. The other side of the lake, we're going to build a large structure to cover the highway we just built coming in. But that's pretty much it. That's the whole vision and we're going to work from there. I've also got to be careful though that I leave it buildable around this area. This can't be the whole build, you know what I mean? So that is actually probably the most difficult part to be honest is leaving it open to being built onto later on. So you guys may have also noticed that I'm bringing a train line in. I have no idea what to do with this in future. I'll probably decide as we go, I think. But I just want the option to be able to do something with it. I mentioned earlier about a structure to cover the road coming in, and that's what I'm doing here. And I've got to say, this is probably the messiest part of the city so far. And I'm hoping the messiest part when we're finished as well, because, yeah, it's sort of half road, half structure. There's no real form to it. It's just slapped together to, yeah, cover that road. So to do that within game, 
I'm basically raising up a fake green surface about 15 in-game meters above all of the roads. The side of it that faces our artificial lake is all a glass front to make it look like maybe there's apartments or some sort of commercial space within. But really we've just got all our dodgy roads that are all connected terribly and yeah I don't take too much care with that sort of stuff if I know I'm covering it. It's function over form that's for sure. So at this stage the whole structure is pretty featureless but it's following some pretty nice geometry. We'll work on this later. Alright let's talk public transport. We're going to have freaking heaps of it and I'm following a little bit of a mythology. I'm not going to have any massive transport hubs everywhere. Rather I'm going to have a whole lot of little wee interconnecting hubs with just a super efficient city of multiple smaller loops all connecting together rather than four or five large ones with big hubs. I just think that's going to work much more efficiently and it's going to help spread out our population right across the city nice and evenly. The other thing I'd like to try and do is make this monorail line that I've decided to use from Ronix69 look as beautiful as I possibly can within game. I'm going to try and follow some nice curvy lines and we're going to hide the track later on with some pretty crafty things. Now when it comes to choosing public transportation or futuristic public transportation off of Steam, there was so many options that I could have gone with. Um, City Walk City Wall for instance has his Hyperloop. There's also some pretty cool maglev trains and pod systems, but good old Ronix 69 with his suspended monorail system. I think this looks really futuristic and I can use the advanced vehicle options mod to change out the vehicle for a more futuristic one and I'm using Skibbeth's one from Invicta and I don't know what it is I just think the suspended monorail looks really cool and really futuristic. I can't wait to see people using it within the city I mean pedestrian only for 90% of the city the public transportation is going to have a massive demand and I want to make it as efficient as I possibly can. Right, now I can talk about how I hide the track. You guys have probably seen in the opening cinematics that the track is sort of partially hidden by these big white structures everywhere. These big white structures were also a big part of that original vision that I sketched out that I mentioned at the beginning. These really have no purpose other than to try and make the city look beautiful. They wrap around buildings at nice angles. But I also had an idea to use that same method to cover the monorail tracks so you couldn't really tell which one the public transportation was following. I don't know how realistic that is to be honest but I think it's really cool. It took a fair few tries in game to make that work. Um, I tried different props with procedural objects and whatnot but eventually I'm using City Walk City Walls networks as decorative networks. These were sort of my last resort, even though they look and work absolutely perfect. If you've used these networks before, you'll know that it's very difficult to place props around them. I'm not going to go into why because it gets a bit technical and boring, but I'm glad I end up using them because they look so good and they're really easy to manoeuvre into position. So at this point we've got enough going on in the city to introduce some people in. I'm going to use those domes on the far side of the lake put them into a layer within procedural objects so that I can hide them temporarily and put some cube services in here lots of people one of them's going to be dedicated to residents and the other one the far one is going to be dedicated to office space and industrial please note that my industrial cubes I put down do not pollute We've also only got one road coming in here so I'm going to use the spawn point mod to move the spawn point back to that road and just connect these up with pedestrian paths. Now we're ready to introduce some people into the city. Then a whole lot of cheeseburgers turned up. I'm not really sure what's happened here but it's sure made me laugh. So after dealing with a whole lot of rogue burgers turning up asking let us in, no bun intended, Man, it took me way too long to think of that. We can move on to laying down some of the bare bones things we're going to need. You can see we've got lots of citizens within the city now. 
I've raced a pedestrian path up on top of our green surface and I've put some cube services up here to draw some citizens up. These are some basic things. There's an elementary school here, there's another couple of residential cubes as well and all of them have their spawn points set to the road underneath the surface. Everything else you see me doing here with the buildings is basically just working around that basic infrastructure. The monorail station here for instance is going to be quite interesting. We're going to leave a little wee gap in between two buildings to make it look like it's sort of slipping in to the station. There's not many people using that station as it stands and that's kind of what I was expecting because the pedestrian paths are much more efficient for moving them around at this stage. But I'm hoping as the city grows larger and the need to move further around in the city sort of becomes apparent for the citizens that they'll use this a little more. So let's move on to another awkward area here. This is another area I didn't really have any vision for, any plans at all. But what I've decided to do is have it transition out into nature as naturally as I possibly can. So it's going to sort of go into some wetlands. And I'm hoping this helps make the lake sort of look natural. And maybe this is helping relocate the wildlife that was misplaced with the creation of the city. I believe to be properly in tune with nature, we need to think about more than just humans. There's going to be many different levels to the city when it's finished. I'm hoping to make this go up vertically as far as it goes horizontally or traditionally as a city. In addition to usable levels with buildings and residential housing and whatnot on them, I want to have lots of green spaces. Geometrically designed areas that are just dedicated to people getting out, getting fresh air and getting exercise. I picture running down one of these at 6am watching the sun rise with all of the beautiful shapes and curvature of the city in the background and just being, you know, full of motivation and beauty. Now let's quickly go to the complete opposite of that. We're working underneath that big structure that's covering the main intersection now. I want to squeeze our next station for our public transportation in here and it's the pod system from the Heathrow Airport in London. I've used this in a couple of my series, namely the sci-fi ones, because it's really cool and it's quite intimate. The track's narrow and small and can be hidden quite easily. But I have no plan in particular for this station. I'm just putting it in here because it's convenient to be able to hide it. I can have a track running out wherever I want, going wherever I sort of intend in the city in future. And it basically just gives me another option moving forward. All of these raised green areas I'm making are going to be usable within game. So I'm running heaps of pedestrian paths up them. We're going to have cube services that draw people up and create real entertainment within the park. And I also experiment with a couple of green areas that don't work. And I show that briefly as well because it's important that you guys see that a lot of this is trial and error. I don't get this right the first time. It's just way too complex. I'm going to hazard a guess and say there's probably even going to be areas I go back to and redo in future. So you can see me here working on a structure we're going to have right at the end of this green space. Sort of like the pinnacle of the walk. And this is going to be a little bit of a theme throughout our city. But I want to introduce a little bit of character. A little bit of stone. There's an arch here. Some columns. They've got a bit of a traditional look to them. Maybe a bit of a Roman look. I'm absolutely desperate to add some sort of character into the city. We can't just have it completely featureless. I want this to feel like a home for the citizens, not a cold, concrete, curvy city.
I thought I'd made this artificial lake a little bit too large. There was too much room available in the middle here that was really doing nothing and that doesn't make much sense. This is going to be a relatively small but highly densely packed city. So all of these kinds of spaces are probably going to be put to use. So in this case I'm going to create like a commercial area here because our city's begging for it as well. But I'm going to make it look like it's somewhat floating above our lake. It's going to include a building out here that maybe is office space and residential combined. But there's also going to be a major walkway connecting each side of the lake here as well. And I'm going to put it on this cool glass looking bottom walkway. I'm also adding in a couple more of those white curvy structures here as well going around the building. And the second one of those running around that building is going to form the outside edge of this glass commercial area. I don't have anything in particular I'm going to put in this at this stage, but I want to create it so I've got options for the next episode or two. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little taste of my new series. I am absolutely loving building it. In the next episode, we're going to take this further and build even cooler stuff. Hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying my new series, and I hope to see you guys on episode two. Peace.